So John Cusack in the 90s classic High Fidelity plays a record store owner who's going through a tremendous amount of life crisis. And all throughout the movie, he uses music to narrate the story of his life in many different interesting ways. But there's this one way that had me thinking. I come along, Barry thought so too, really. But I guess it looks as if you're reorganizing your records. Yeah. Um, what is this, uh, chronological? No. Not alphabetical. Nope. Which one? Autobiographical. No way. Yep. I can tell you how I got from Deep Purple to Howlin' Wolf in just 25 moves. Oh and God. I want to find the song Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. I have to remember that I bought it for someone in the fall of 1983, Pyle but didn't give it to them for personal reasons. That sounds... Comforting. Yes. So I'm Chad Brooks, I'm a pastor here in North Louisiana, and I'm passionate about how people understand the role of scripture to be part of the Christian life. And I was thinking about this scene I just showed you, and I kept thinking about, you know, I bet I could tell the story of my own spiritual journey through my Bibles. And so I wanna do that today for you. is my history right in front of me. I'm super stoked to go through these. Uh, I actually wanted to come back because I realized what I shot a couple of days ago didn't go into the spiritual journey side of it. And that's what I really want to focus in on. So if I start at the very beginning, um, this is the Bible that my parents gave me when I was baptized, when I was eight years old. You know, you got the kid Bible thing going on right there. Uh, this is like a big boy Bible. <laughs> It's like, I think it's the exact same Bible my dad was carrying as a youth pastor, which is why I had to stick the 93QID sticker inside of it. But um, I got this Bible on the day I was baptized, and according to the, the input shot right there, it was Super Bowl Sunday of 1988, so I guess um, that's what it was. I'm just excited I spelled everything right. And when I look through this Bible, I see a couple of things going on, you know. I see, like, I'm filling out the births and that sort of thing and some deaths and, uh, like, just kind of trying to, like, do the things I feel like an adult does with their Bible. And then I'm also writing down where there's a dinosaur reverence in the book of Job. Uh, but I carried this Bible well into college. I remember being at my first church job uh, when I was 21 years old and using this Bible. But I look into it and I see a couple of things. You know, one, I see a passage that says QT November of 1993. So when I was 13 years old doing devotion stuff. And I also know that if I go into the book of Philippians, I saw this yesterday that I I had a note from a Bible study when I was like 20. Yeah. And so in 2000, and so like this was my Bible for, you know, quite a long time. And I look at this Bible and like, this is where I began to just fall in love with scripture and to understand what scripture meant to me there. And so kind of fast forward a little bit. Um, and like I said, I carried that Bible for a long time. And then I have this Bible, and this is not the exact Bible because that one got gave away on a mission trip in Jamaica. But there's a video about this Bible. I'm going to put a link to it in one of those boxes right there. But you know, in the video, I refer to this as my college sobering up Bible because I went through just an incredibly dark spell that meant me like locking myself in my bedroom for months. And um, I ended up finding this Bible as I was kind of crawling out of it, just a deeply depressed state. And I fell in love with it. And when I think about this Bible, what I think about is the fact that for the first time, A, this was me just going through a super, super dark place and always depending on God. But also, this was the first time I remember sitting down and reading whole entire books and where I just fell in love uh, with Scripture. Um, I didn't like the Apostle Paul for a really long time. And I remember I had a job where I got off at midnight 
uh, in a liquor store I worked at. I remember I said the sobering up Bible. And uh, reading like the entire book of Ephesians at night, or the entire book of Philippians. Like, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm still like adrenaline racing from working on my feet for eight or ten hours and sitting on my front porch just reading scripture at one o'clock two o'clock in the morning and so I, I look at this bible and i'm so attached to it and it's out of print now but i find them from time to time whenever i find them i always buy them just uh, i quit giving them away but I, I have a copy here and i also have a copy at the house uh, that's just there but you know i i just i love this bible for how it marked me learning what just personal dependence on god was like and how, as an adult, Jesus took me through a really rough spot, and I learned to depend on him even more inside of that. And then, so I have this Bible, too. This is like a little bitty guy. And I remember just picking this up at some Christian bookstore because I wanted to uh, just have a smaller Bible to keep with me. Back then, I was working on the road big and rock and roll. My hair was down to like right here. And I wore this denim vest with the sleeves cut off. And I remember carrying this Bible inside, like the inside pocket of my vest. Uh, but I, I remember this Bible being with me as I had to make decisions about who I was. So that was the thing that I really think about this. So the next Bible is this one. Uh, all of those were new international versions, by the way. And this is where I kind of start changing translation. There was a there is a New Living Translation Study Bible during this time as well, and it's in my workshop at my house. It's kind of a weird place for a Bible, but I've always, that's just where it's at, and I, I, I couldn't dig through and find it. So this right here, I was working at a Christian bookstore selling Bibles, an independent Christian bookstore, and it's where I began just to fall deeply in love and to begin understanding not just reading the Bible, but reading different translations and that sort of thing. And, and the, the English Standard Version was a pretty, pretty new thing at that point in time. And I remember scoping them out and wanting one, but they were all a little expensive. And then we got this shipment of like the cheap bonded leather thin lines. It's almost the exact same Bible as this one. Uh, same format and stuff, you know, center, uh, uh, there's no references around this, but uh, I think this was published in 2002. Um, and I probably got this in 2003, uh, 2004 uh, at latest. And this Bible was the one where after I had kind of like, I started sorting myself out really well. This is also, if you look, this is where I really started. Let's see if we can get this to focus. I started really writing in this Bible. And um, I remember my, when I went back into ministry after leaving it for a while, when I was in campus ministry, this was the Bible I was using. This was the Bible I also took with me to seminary um, and started off seminary at Asbury with. And this Bible for me just really is when I just started digging in uh, to understanding Scripture, but understanding like the difference between cool Old Testament stories, that sort of thing. I'm looking back in this cool story about this Bible is I was in one of my best friend's weddings. He was the best man in my wedding. A couple years later, I was in his wedding. And it was a full Catholic mass, but I was asked to read scripture as part of this. I remember carrying this Bible up and I had it like sit onto the reading that was there. Uh, I'm actually going to look and see if I have got a note because if it was a wedding, I imagine I know what reading it was. First Corinthians 13. Um, yeah, it's not marked. I don't know if it was this way. Anyway, whatever it was, I had this Bible uh, like on the podium of the reading. And I remember the priest like telling them during the wedding message, he says, your friend who read the Bible, he clearly loves Scripture. And like this is where I, I just began. It's some big spiritual transition. You know, this was the Bible I used when I realized that I was called to work in the church um, full time. Something that I had run away from a really long time. I'm a preacher's kid. And I can always say preacher's kids either go into jail or ministry. And um, I was on the second side of that. But like, this is the Bible that I carry when I realized that God was calling me to do something besides just run sound. And so I carried this Bible decently several years through seminary. Um, and, you know, the ESV was okay at Asbury. But the New Revised Standard was really the academic text that people wanted you to read. And I had bought some old ones and some used ones and that kind of a thing. I think there's probably a couple little ones up there. And I have like the old Renovare, the, spirit, you know, the, the, the Renovare Spiritual Formation Study Bible. 
Um, it has it, they still publish that different name now. I had that NRS feed, but then back when I was blogging a lot and reviewing books and talking about Bibles, the early days of the internet, um, Oxford Press sent me this bad boy. I've made a video on this Bible as well, but like, this is what I call my seminary Bible. You see, a quote from Eugene Peterson right there on there eat this book. These are out of print, but if you find one, I would love it if you would pick it up for me. Uh, like, don't pay like the $100 like they show up. I mean, this was a $20 Bible brand new, I think. Um, and sometimes you can find them used for like 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, this one's falling apart. But this is where I began to love to read it. I was formed in a couple ways to this Bible. Number one, the first time I ever read the Bible cover to cover was using this Bible. And I did it in one year. And then the next year, my friend Aaron Mansfield, I did an episode of uh, Stuff I Want to Say. And I'll pop that up below. But he convinced me to read the Bible in 90 days. And I did it with this one one summer. This was the Bible that made me fall in love with two things. With A, just like consistently reading the Scripture every day in a systematic way. But also, it's a wide margin, guys. Can you, can you see that? This made me fall in love with margins. You can tell it's just like radically falling apart. And so when I look at this Bible, I think about seminary. I think about me learning to understand and to work alongside of the complexities of Scripture, but also to see just the big story uh, that the Bible tells us about God and his people and how he wants us to be with him. And so I was using that as my primary Bible in seminary, carrying it for one reason so beat up is just being in the back of a, um, of a backpack for a few years. And when I started coming back into a preaching ministry as a full, uh, as a full-time pastor in the United Methodist church, I realized that, you know, where I was in seminary, you could throw a rock and hit a seminary. And no matter how small the church was, they were used to like academic, like big, thick preaching. I was at a church that was in the absolute worst neighborhood of Lexington, Kentucky, I mean, people were doing drugs in the middle of church and I could like preach in a robe and it was all high minded. When I moved back to Louisiana, I realized quickly that wasn't the case and that the New Revised Standard Version was a little bit tough for people to hear and to talk about and to deal with on Sunday morning. So I wanted to find a different Bible. I wanted to find a preaching Bible. I wanted to find what my eyes were getting a little bit worse and there's a tiny print in there. And I wanted to find something simpler. So I remembered how much I loved the New Living Translation. And my dad's a big fan of the New Living Translation. So I went to Books A Million and picked up just some cheap, large print, thin line NLT. And this was my preaching Bible the entire time I was at St. Paul's. Uh, and it's still up until a couple of years ago, if I reached for an NLT, this was the NLT I reached for. And then this one stayed at the office. And so I always had an NLT within reach of my desk. But when I think about my own spiritual journey in this Bible, I begin to think about what does it mean for me not just to know, uh, not just to know what Jesus is telling me, but what does it mean to lead? I'm going to shut my blinds real quick. There we go. But not just what is Jesus telling me and how do I respond in that, but what does it mean to teach people, to lead people, to invite them into a life and a relationship with Jesus. And so this was my preaching Bible for uh, several years. I, take, I took it into us launching Foundry, and then it began to just kind of, I mean, you can see it's, it's, it's falling apart in multiple places. It was a, another $20 thin line Bible. And I loved that format, and I couldn't find it anymore. My plan was, let me just get another one of these. And I couldn't find it. But then also, I was listening to those people on the internet that talk about those expensive Bibles. You know, the premium Bibles with the nice leather and all the things. I was hearing from those people a little bit too much. And I found this bad boy. So this is another New Living Translation. It's actually the exact same text block as this. Like the guts of this Bible are the guts of this Bible. But this is an Allen. Let me see what it is. It's, I, I don't know if it says or not. This is a Highland goat skin, full yap. That means the hangy things. The hangy things are there. It was gilded at one point in time on the side, but inside it's the exact same Bible as the other one, which was great because I already knew where everything was. And so I could go to it really quick. And uh, you know, this thing like spent the night in the parking lot. I did not, I don't baby anything. And I most certainly did not baby this. 
Um, but this was my preaching Bible for years here at Foundry. And most of the time, this is the one I still carry uh, on to uh, and to preach on Sunday morning um, uh, there. So it's just there. I'm not using it for anything beyond preaching out of on Sunday morning now because it's falling apart. But it's also just like, I know this is getting washed out, but like it's just, there's not much space left to read uh, in it. When I think about this Bible spiritually, what I think about is like, this is the Bible where I realized I was not some like young buck doing this anymore. And not was it just about to, to tell people of this different world and to lead people in this different world, but for me to myself become unsatisfied with the way the world was around me in my own life. Uh, this Bible took me through several laps around with 90 day Bible. Um, it was just deeply there. And I began to process through scripture um, in a really, really different way with this Bible. My devotional life began changing a lot while I was using this Bible. And in an awesome, beautiful way, I realized that just the format of this was not that adequate for me, but I loved the translation. And I, I just, I could not, I love New Living Translation. I'm gonna make another video. I've got so many videos to make y'all. Um, but I, at this time I started watching videos cause I was unsatisfied and I started watching Jason Mayfield's videos and Matthew Everhard's videos and, uh, not just about the premium Bible stuff, but the way they were marking up the Bibles, the way different things were happening. And I began just to get an itch for something else. And, uh, in mid 2018, I began discerning that I felt God was calling me to only preach through gospel passages for 20, for 2019 and to call it the year of Jesus. And so at first I wasn't even sure if I could do that or not. I was like, man, can you get 52 sermons um, out of the gospels? That sounds kind of silly, but for me where I love, I can live in the old Testament. Um, I wrote a master's thesis on preaching revelation all of those things, it's just tough. But I decided, I found an edition I liked, I, I thought sounded really, really good. And this is a crossways. So I went to the ESV, which I'm not wild about, but I'll use. Um, but this is a long name. This is a crossways journaling New Testament inductive edition, which means there are some margins, but there are also, I think it's three eighths of an inch distance between each line. And so I bought this Bible for the specific purpose. You see it's labeled on the side right there. This is my Gospel Read 2018. And so um, I got this Bible and um, I put together uh, some just quick, quick um, uh, thoughts on things. I put together my first color coding system in this Bible as well. And I decided to read through all four Gospels as much as I could for like a month and to just start making notes on what I could do, how I could preach. Uh, and I started labeling stuff up. You see the colors here at this point in time don't matter anything to me, but there's a bunch of notes. Um, so when I look at this Bible, what this Bible began in me is something that I still carry today. Just a couple days ago, on a day off one morning, I ended up having like a two and a half hour scripture reading session. And the majority of it was the Gospel of Matthew's fault. I just sat there and read five chapters super deeply. But when I think about this, this is the Bible that made me, see I've got a seedbed sticker and then I've got a Bigfoot sticker on the back. It's also hardback Bibles, big revelation hardback Bibles, but I, this is the Bible that made me just deeply begin to realize that it's not just a new world to invite people. It's not just a new world we have to invite ourselves into, but the world that Jesus builds in front of us is radically, just radically different than our own world. So that was a cool Bible. So I just used that just for prep. I've not, I think I might have like first Peter marked up in here too. Uh, and that's it. And I would use this Bible more if I, if they could, I could find them again. I have a, um, I, I can't find this Bible half time. That's like a running thread in my life is my favorite Bibles end up going out of stock and you can't find them anymore. I've got a, I've got another ESV that I'm scared to touch because I'm, I'm scared I'm going to like it so much and they'll never sell them again. Uh, but I'm going to have a video soon on me breaking the fear of, of marking up that Bible. Uh, so I'm looking for that. I'm hunting around and lo and behold, I go into a Lifeway that is closing and I find a New Living Translation ah, with wide margins. 
and it was hardback and, and, and the print wasn't too small and it wasn't girly looking. I'm sorry, but like all the girly Bibles are all the wide margins I can find. And so I had this Bible and I was kind of looking around. I'm gonna look for a date because I always write the dates of when I read something. Um, that's sort of back, I see that way back in my blue Bible for my kid. So I see this on 121.19, and I'm starting to read and mark up Deuteronomy. But in March of 2019, I went to the doctor one morning thinking I had bronchitis, and I left the doctor being diagnosed in stage four heart failure. And I went to the ER that night, got an eight day vacation in ICU, spent a couple more days in the hospital, and took a month off of work. Uh, almost died, it was like mind blowing. This is the Bible I was using back then, and I slowly went through and marked up Deuteronomy while I was home that week, or home that month. And I'll have some B-roll shots, and like, this Bible is super, super marked up. This is also the Bible where I really, really fleshed out um, my markup system and what that looks like. Uh, and I, I, when I think about this Bible, I think about how it, that time in my life where I began to radically re reorient understanding who I was and then also understanding how I relate to people around me. Um, just massive, massive spiritual development, a personal side coming out of that time and that Bible. And then um, I loved that, was not using it that much because it still just wasn't my jam. And then I finally realized, and I started this idea, and I did this in 2020. I've gotten a lot of YouTube hits off of videos about this, but I decided to jump into using only one Bible for the whole year, and I bought a Cambridge wide margin hardback in English Standard Version. As much as I dog ESV, I use it on probably 90% of the time because the editions just fit the way I read scripture and the way I do scripture. And so there's a whole playlist of, of one Bibles for me. I'm actually, uh, this is my, I'm in my second year of doing this. My 2021 one is, I think it's in my bag over there. But when I look at this Bible, what's crazy is, so this is the year where I began seriously using the daily office uh, inside the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer and where I just, my prayer life. When I look at this video, this Bible, I look at my prayer life. This is the Bible that I used all throughout COVID. Um, I also brought this Bible to the Holy Land uh, right before the, the pandemic started. And I'm reading passages through here and I kept up with the whole daily office for two weeks in the Holy Land and like seeing notes on a passage. And it's like, hey, read this in the Holy Land. I, my spiritual life, you know, it's it's ever since I almost died has just changed dramatically, and it was uh, I had a, a beautiful season of highs, and then when I came out, when we went into lockdown, at first I was excited because I thought, wow, I'm gonna get another month at home. It's gonna be just like last year. It's gonna be excellent. And we all know that like nothing cool happened <laughs> during that scenario, but I look back at that Bible and I, I love the one year side of it to see the spiritual development. Um, to see the lists and the things I have built in the back, to see the things that I've been thankful for, to see the things I was processing through, um, to see uh, just, I did a couple really cool chronological reads in 2020. And just when I flip through the pages of this Bible, the only thing I see is my spiritual development. I don't see preaching plans. That's kind of why I like having a different preaching Bible than my just devotion, my teaching Bible. Uh, but I just see all sorts of amazing things that Jesus was doing. Uh, the church was in the middle of a capital campaign and a building program during that. Like when I look at that, that 2020 Bible, I just see faithfulness. So that's my story. You know, that's my, that's my spiritual testimony told through the lives of the Bibles that I have used, the Bibles I've valued. I've got a lot more Bibles, but these are the ones that over the course of the 40 years of my life, or the, to be honest, you know, 30 three years ago since I got that blue NIV from my parents. You know, this is a story of my life with Jesus told through my Bibles. And so I'd love to encourage you to do something. If you do a spiritual journey by your Bibles, make sure to leave a link down in the comments below. I'd love to see it. I love to hear other people tell stories like this. But I'm Chad Brooks. I'm passionate about 
how Scripture changes our life and encourages our development with Jesus Christ. If you love content like this, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can hit the comment uh, down below. Uh, you can hit the little bell down below to get notified. But I will see you back in the next video. And until then, just make sure you're staying in your Bible. Check you later.